Okay, we are moving on to Texas. So let's take a look at some of these questions here. Integrate knowledge and ideas. Number one, evaluating arguments. What caused Texans to want to break away from Mexico? How does the text make this argument? So we know that Mexico already declared independence from Spain, but now we're going to figure out why Texas wanted to declare independence from Mexico. Number two, evaluating media. Does the image on page 400 support or contradict the text in this lesson? How so? And it's talking about the image right here. Let's look at the guiding question. How did Texas become a state? So as part of Mexico, how did the United States get it? And how did it become one of the current 50 states that we have? In 1821, Mexico won independence from Spain. Mexico controlled the land that is now Texas. At the time, the non-Native American population of Texas was about 3,000. Most of these people were Tejanos, or Mexicans who claimed Texas as their home. Wishing to increase settlement, Mexico offered vast tracts of land to people who would agree to bring families to settle there, as citizens of Mexico. Stephen F. Austin brought 300 American families to settle in Texas. Austin's success made him a leader among the American settlers. At first, Mexico encouraged Americans to settle in Texas. Before long, Americans greatly outnumbered Tejanos. Tensions with Mexico developed because of rules Mexico imposed on immigrants. These included learning Spanish and becoming Catholic. Many Americans also practiced slavery, with which Mexico disagreed and tried to ban. In 1830, Mexico issued a decree, or official order, closing its borders to further American immigration and directing Mexican uh, convict troops be garrisoned in Texas to enforce the law. American settlers, led by Austin and Sam Houston, tried to make peace with Mexican leaders. These efforts failed. Texans, including Americans and Tejanos, began uh, planning to break away from Mexico. In 1833, General Antonio Lopez de Santa Ana became president of Mexico, and the conflict grew violent when Texans resisted his efforts to centralize power. In 1835, Santa Ana increased the number of troops in Texas to enforce his authority. In December, the Texans responded by capturing the city of San Antonio from a larger Mexican force. Santa Ana was enraged. He marched into Texas with a large army to retake San Antonio in February 1836. There he found a small Texan force barricaded or blocked off inside a mission building called the Alamo. So you can see some of these causes for um, calling for independence from Mexico is that you have a lot of people coming in from the United States and a lot of them are used to doing their own thing and they just don't want to follow Mexican rule. They don't want to uh, learn Spanish. They don't want to become Catholic because in Mexico it was mandatory that you were Catholic. And they also wanted to bring slavery as well. Uh, and slavery was illegal in Mexico. So when uh, Santa Ana tried to um, force them to follow the rules, it led to problems, it led to conflict. Determining me, what is the difference between a Texan and a Tejano? So again, Tejanos, over here, if you look in, in this part of where the vocabulary word highlighted, Tejanos, are Mexicans who claim Texas as their home. So people who lived in Texas who were of Mexican descent. And then Texans were considered uh, people of American descent who lived in Texas. Over here we have uh, this picture of Juan Seguin. And um, Juan Seguin and Jose Antonio Navarro were Tejanos who supported and worked for an independent Texas. So you had Tejanos and Texans working together to get rid of um, Mexican rule. Uh, you have, here's a, a picture uh, or painting of Alamo Defenders. Uh, and they were inspired by the leader, William Barrett Travis. And so he's one of the um, many people killed at the Alamo. So let's look closer at the Alamo. The Texans had only about 180 soldiers to take on Santa Ana's army of several thousand. The Texans did have brave leaders, however, including folk hero Davy Crockett, William B. Travis, and a tough Texan named Jim Bowie. For 13 long days, 
Through several attacks, the defenders of the Alamo kept Santa Ana's army at bay with rifle fire. On March 6, 1836, Mexican cannon fire smashed the Alamo's walls. The Mexican army was too large to hold back. They entered the fortress, killing all the defenders, including Travis, Crockett, Bowie, and a number of Tejanos. Only a few women and children and some servants survived to tell of the, t tell of the battle. The Alamo defenders had been defeated, but they had bought the Texans time to gather troops and supplies. They had also provided the Texans with a rallying cry. Remember the Alamo! Texas declares its independence. During the siege of the Alamo, Texan leaders met at the town of Washington on the Brazos. Among them were a number of Tejanos, who were also unhappy with Mexican rule. On March 2, 1836, four days before the fall of the Alamo, they declared independence from Mexico. They then established the Republic of Texas. Texan leaders set up a temporary government. This government named Sam Houston commander-in-chief of the Texan forces. Houston gathered an army of about 900 at San Jacinto, near the site of present-day Houston. Santa Ana camped nearby with an army of more than 1,300. On April 21st, the Texans launched a surprise attack, shouting, Remember the Alamo! They killed more than 600 soldiers and captured about 700 more, including Santa Ana. One recruit who arrived at the camp on the day of the battle recorded his impressions of Houston's army. So let's look at some of these questions. This is a primary source, so this is written by someone who was there. Number one, determining central ideas. What does this account tell you about the men who fought for Texas independence? So he's going to describe the people who fought for Texas independence. Number two, citing text evidence. How do you know the Texas army did not supply all its forces with their weapons? So citing evidence, we want to look for a specific example, citing the evidence that shows that the Texas army didn't supply or give its troops, its forces, their weapons. What evidence do we have of that? So let's look at this description from someone, um, uh, a Texan recruit. See, it's an unnamed Texan recruit quoted in um, Little's Living Age. A scene singularly wild and picturesque presented itself to my view. Around the 20 or 30 campfires stood as many groups of men, English, Irish, Scotch, French, Germans, Italians, Poles, Yankees, Mexicans, and more. All unwashed, unshaven for months, their long hair, beard, and mustaches ragged and matted, their clothes in tatters and plastered with mud. A more savage-looking band could scarcely have been assembled. Yet many were gentlemen, owners of large estates, distinguished some for oratory speaking, some for science, and some for medical talent. Their guns were of every size and shape. So if I want to give an example of how I could tell that Texas didn't provide them their weapons, is that they had different weapons of size and shape. Usually if um, you're provided by a government weapons, they usually give you standard issue type of weapons. Everyone has a similar weapon. But everyone brought their own guns because you had all these different types of guns there. On May 14, 1836, Santa Ana signed a treaty that recognized the independence of Texas. So uh, then we have this map of the Texas War for Independence. You can take a look. The red shows the Mexican forces and their victories. And the uh, Texan forces is blue. You see Austin's original colony. And then when they ended the war, there was a disagreement over where Texas ended. So you have Texas here, Austin's original colony. You see the different battles here. There's the Battle of the Alamo, which uh, encouraged the the battle cry, remember the Alamo, and the battle of San Jacinto, which pretty much ended the rebellion because they captured the leader of Mexico. They captured Santa Ana. Once they captured the leader, that was pretty much the end of the fighting. So once the war is, um, the treaty is signed, they said that their border is at the river, but it was unclear which river, the Nueces River or the Rio Grande. Mexico said that the border was at the Nueces River right here which meant all this belonged to Mexico. Texas said the border was at the Rio Grande, which meant all of this belonged to Texas. This will not be resolved later until 
uh, the Mexican-American War. And you can see which side was the aggressor in this war. But how do you know who started it? Um, let's see. Yeah, anything else about here? No, that's pretty much it we're going to go over for now. The Lone Star Republic. In September 1836, Texans elected Sam Houston as their president. Mirabeau Lamar, who had fought at the Battle of San Jacinto, served as vice president. Houston sent a delegation to Washington, D.C. to ask the United States to annex or take control of Texas. Andrew Jackson, however, refused the request. The addition of another slave state would upset the balance of slave and free states in Congress. For the moment, Texas would remain an independent country. Because there was such a huge number of um, people from the United States living in Texas, they wanted to join the United States. But again, there was that balance issue. With Same thing with Florida. Florida had to wait until a free state was added. They didn't want to add Texas as a slave state when that would upset their balance of free and slave states. So Andrew Jackson refused. So uh, it takes about another 10 years. Texas becomes a state. Many Texans wanted to join the United States. Southerners favored Texas annexation, but Northerners opposed admitting another slave state to the Union. President Martin Van Buren did not want to inflame the slavery issue or risk war with Mexico. He put off the question of annexing Texas. John Tyler, who became president in 1841, supported annexation. The Senate remained, remained divided over the slavery issue and failed to ratify the annexation treaty. The situation changed with the, with the 1844 presidential campaign Manifest Destiny was a popular idea at the time. The South wanted Texas. The North favored gaining, gaining all of Oregon. Candidate James K. Polk supported both actions. After Polk won, Congress passed a resolution to annex Texas. In 1845, Texas joined the Union. So let's take a look. Uh, let's see. How were the Texans able to beat a larger army at San Jacinto? So we look over here. They had 1,300 troops versus 900. And yet they were able to win because they were able to launch a surprise attack. <clears throat> so next question. Why did it take nine years for the United States to annex Texas? So it took nine years because of the issue over slavery. Uh, over the balance of slave and free states. So that was a very large issue to stop uh, them from adding Texas as well. They did not want to risk a war with Mexico. So let's take a look at Davy Crockett, 1786-1836. Davy Crockett was born in Tennessee and became known as a bear hunter, soldier, and scout. Stories of his daring deeds turned him into a folk hero. He served three terms in Congress and opposed President Jackson's Indian Removal Act. When he was not re-elected, Crockett moved to Texas and raised volunteers to fight Mexico. He fought to the death at the Alamo. And so that's pretty much it for now. Go ahead and take a look at the questions. And you can watch the video on the PowerPoint of uh, Texas.